Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss some of the recent updates and actually somewhat exciting updates in regards to one of the closest stars to the solar system. The star you see illustrated right here, known as the Barnard star. And a star that we actually discussed not so long ago, approximately 5 months ago actually, because scientists finally discovered and confirmed at least one exoplanet in its orbit. But in this new study researchers now officially confirmed three more essentially making Barnard star one of the most exciting star systems close to us and essentially the closest multiplanetary system officially confirmed. But because the star system here is kind of interesting and somewhat unusual, it's worth exploring these discoveries once again in a little bit more detail. And I guess here a super brief summary of that previous video that should also be in the description below just so that you understand why this discovery is kind of exciting. In essence, Barnard star that's only about 5.96 light years away from planet Earth, represents one of the most studied red dwarfs in the entire galaxy. Mostly because it's so close to us, and because by distance this is the fourth closest star to the solar system. The three other stars are Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B, and Proxima Centauri. And though Proxima Centauri is the closest red dwarf, and Proxima Centauri seems to contain two of its own exoplanets discovered not so long ago, once again videos in the description talk about those planets as well. Barnard star is just a little bit different and a little bit more unusual for at least a few reasons. First of all, one of the main reasons it was even discovered is actually because it's moving so fast across the night skies. It basically has the fastest proper motion of any known star. Here it's close to about 110 km per second. And this is exactly how it was originally discovered by Edward Emerson Barnard back in 1916 which is why the star is named after him as well. But the fast motion is not as exciting as the age of the star, because strangely enough this also appears to be an ancient star. It's believed to be at least 7 billion years old, but could possibly be up to about 12 billion years old, and has even been suggested to be one of the oldest stars in the entire galaxy, which is why researchers really wanted to find something around it, a planet, any kind of a planet. Mostly because it was also believed to be very low in metallicity. Some of the initial observations suggested that its metallicity is about 10% of the Sun, or in other words it contains only 10% of non-hydrogen and non-helium compared to the solar system. And so many different models suggested that maybe it just does not have enough material to form any planets and possibly only contains a bunch of smaller objects such as for example dwarf planets and asteroids. And for many many decades researchers tried to find any planets here and though some planets were initially suggested to exist, they eventually all turn out to be nothing. There were no gas giants here, no super earths, nothing large, nothing exciting. Here's actually where this star is located compared to some of the other objects such as the Alpha Centauri Proxima Centauri systems and the brown dwarfs known as the Loman 16. But one of the reasons researchers knew this is an ancient star is because of the way it was spinning around. Its rotation was extremely slow, taking something like 140 to 150 days, which basically implied that it's super old as well. Mostly because we know that as stars get older, they usually start spinning slower and slower. And to researchers this meant that if there are any planets here, especially in the habitable zone, maybe this would be a perfect star system for basically a long term habitable system. Mostly because it was always believed that as these red dwarfs get older, they become extremely mild and eventually become perfect star systems. And all of this was proven to be completely incorrect in 1998. Because in 1998, for the first time ever, astronomers observed a massive stellar flare coming from this star, and it was so powerful that it actually increased the temperature of the star by at least 4000 Kelvin, essentially doubling the temperature for a brief moment. And this was such a powerful event that this essentially changed everything. To scientists this implied that any planet in the vicinity of the star would very likely be completely stripped of everything because these solar flares turn out to be a lot more common, because very similar flares were once again detected in 2019, although this time mostly visible in the X-rays. And so Barnard's star turned out to be a flare star, a star capable of producing massive eruptions, and a star that would produce so many powerful plasma ejection events that any atmosphere or any liquid water would unlikely to exist in the habitable zone. Here scientists even calculated the approximate atmospheric loss for a typical planet, discovering that approximately 90 Earth atmospheres would be stripped of any planet every billion years. But they still wanted to find some kind of a planet, just to see if they can even exist in these hostile conditions. And especially because some of the more recent calculations 
even suggested that maybe the star's metallicity was actually a little bit higher, possibly 75% of the Sun and not 10, which would imply it could possibly host smaller terrestrial planets. And so the search continued, and as we've discussed in that previous video, for the first time ever researchers finally discovered the first ever exoplanet discovered around a typical population 2 red dwarf star, a planet known as Barnard B. This was officially confirmed in August of 2024 by using a spectrograph known as Espresso on top of the Very Large Telescope and was found to be approximately 0.37 masses of planet Earth with an orbit of 3.15 days. And so even though it was orbiting very close to the star, it was nevertheless there. Here the temperature would be at least 165 Celsius, 330 Fahrenheit, assuming there is no atmosphere. If there is any atmosphere, the temperatures would be much higher. And this was super exciting because it basically suggests that planets around these red dwarfs, despite low metallicity, are definitely possible. But obviously not massive planets. Here this was just a little bit larger than Mars, but even smaller than Venus. But the thing is we didn't really know much about this planet because it was discovered this way. This is the radial velocity method, where researchers essentially observe the star and try to find tiny wobbles, mostly based on the red shifts and the blue shifts of the star scholar, by observing the star long enough to see periodic changes. And though years ago this would be impossible, because the technology just didn't exist yet, some of these new instruments like Espresso allow us to measure extremely tiny deviations, thus allowing researchers to discover these super small planets. But in the study they also mentioned that there might be three more candidates. It wasn't clear exactly where they are or if they even existed, but there was a bit of a hint. And the candidates would also be potentially rocky planets. Because in this case this is also believed to be a rocky planet, since it's the only way we can explain such a close proximity to the star and such a low mass. In terms of size it's believed to be about 75% of the size of planet Earth. But these first observations did not reveal much else. And more importantly, no transits have been found. Observations by the test telescope discovered no shadows, which meant that the overall calculations would be very limited. And that's until now. Because a completely separate team using a completely different instrument decided to do something very similar, but also decided to basically ignore previous data and see if they can actually either confirm this or possibly disprove this. And here they used something very different. Maroon X instrument attached to the Gemini telescope in Hawaii. And the instrument that's specifically designed to look for various planets. But once again it works in a very similar way. Instead of looking for the shadow, it looks for tiny deviations in the orbit by looking at the red shifts and the blue shifts. And so here once again it discovered a bit of a wobble. Now because the star is actually pretty massive and these planets are not that massive, the wobble was very small. You can actually see it in this graph right here. And basically here each of these planets would change the star's velocity by approximately 20 to 45 centimeters per second. Or in other words, because the planet in this case is pulling on the star, the star would move just a little bit this way, then the other way, with the overall change of velocity only being in centimeters per second. That's how ridiculously accurate this instrument is. And that's because the mass of each planet creates its own gravitational pull that then influences the star. But when all of the observations were combined, scientists discovered definitive signs of certain patterns implying that something was pulling on the star in a very certain way. And that something had to be four separate planets, but each of them very small, possibly about 20 to 30 mass of planet Earth. So essentially planets a little bit more massive than Mercury and Mars, but less than half the mass of Venus. And each of them surprisingly very close to the star. The closest one was orbiting every 2.3 days, the farthest one every 6.7 days. So none of these planets were even in a habitable zone. Oh, the planet E in this case, because it's much smaller and much less massive, is actually kind of exciting. It does have a slight chance to potentially be just cold enough and just small enough to maybe have something exciting on the surface. And so after three years of observations, specifically during 112 different days, there was enough evidence to confirm all four planets. Four rocky planets around one of the closest star systems near us. And because this discovery was made completely separately from the previous discovery, using different methods and different telescopes, here this actually gives us a lot of hope that this is indeed what's there. But once again, because currently it's almost impossible to see these planets directly or to analyze their shadows, unfortunately there's not much else we're going to know about them for quite some time. Just measuring their mass is unfortunately not enough and not being able to observe their shadow as they pass in front of a star implies we're not going to be able to study their atmospheres or even study their surface. Or at least until something else comes out 
or some new discoveries are made. But here this new study also does a few more things. First of all, they also confirm that there seem to be no planets in the habitable zone. Specifically, no planet larger than 57% of the mass of planet Earth. There might be something smaller, but nothing has been seen so far. And so it's quite certain that Barnard Star doesn't seem to have any larger planets in its orbit. Likewise, it's actually really surprising that the smallest planet was even discovered. Because currently, the smallest and the farthest planet, that's only about 19% the mass of planet Earth, is actually the least massive exoplanet ever discovered using the radial velocity method. And its pull on a star is so tiny that it only causes the change of velocity of about 22 centimeters per second. Just a few years ago, it would be impossible to see it using any telescope. But both studies suggest that all four planets seem to be definitely there. And surprisingly, they seem to be kind of small. But because once again, this is an ancient star system, and because its metallicity is lower than the Sun, this is also exciting because it confirms that these population 2 stars, which were very likely created a long time ago, seem to also be able to form terrestrial planets. In other words, confirming that terrestrial planets could have technically existed extremely early in the universe. Because it's quite possible that these planets formed as far back as 12 billion years ago. We don't really know their exact age yet, but chances are because the star is once again so exciting, we're going to know much more about it in the next few years. And so because this is one of the closest systems to us, and because this is such an exciting system now, I'm very likely going to be making more videos about this in the next few months. Until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.